tell one another that they're looking beautiful this morning, all of that kind of thing that we love to do, uh, make everybody feel welcome. Off you go.
Beat Psalm 116 says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. And then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death. And he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. Amen? Amen. What an amazing uh, thing God has done for us. God has blessed us. Let's worship again, shall we?
this. It's so great to see you. Please take your seats. It's really so good to see you today, and uh, it's just such a, a, a privilege, such an exciting thing to uh, to be having a baptism service and to be baptizing Eileen uh, today. Are you nervous? Very. <laughs> That's all right. That's exactly the way it should be. And uh, we're going to make that worse right now by inviting you up so that everybody can stare at you and, uh, and you can share your story of what Jesus has done for you. Some of us, know, some of us who've been in church for a long time know this is a, called a testimony. But what it basically is, it's, it's our story of what Jesus has done for us and how God has met with us and how God has been good to us. So uh, Eileen, why don't you come on up and uh, you can share that. Why don't we all give her an encouragement if she does that, right? Fantastic. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, right, I'm going to start. I've written down a few things to help me with my testimony, and I will. I wrote it last night, and I want to read it out before I baptize. Yes? Yes. I have always believed in Jesus. I was brought up a Catholic, christened Holy Communion Confirmation. We went to Mass all the time. I found it boring. I couldn't wait for it to end. I used to watch the clock for it to hurry up. It seemed as if it just was the same over and over and over again. Even though I attended church, I never knew Jesus like I do now. Even though I believed in him, I didn't live my life for him. I didn't think it was any harm to have the lifestyle that I lived. I lied, I swore, I got drunk on occasions, many of occasions. I gossiped, I wronged a lot of people in my life. Friends, family, those I loved the most, but God himself knows that I'm truly, truly sorry for all the people that I have hurt and wronged in life. <coughs> and I am so deeply sorry to God and to everybody who knows me and loves me for the sinful life that I lived. The first time I come to know Jesus as my friend and saviour, I was in a very bad place in my life. My husband was away from me. Most of my family abandoned me due to my lifestyle. My friends at that time, who I thought was friends, also left me. There was trouble at my door with enemies, and all I had was my children and maybe a friend, Natasha. She's my niece. She was very, very good to me at that time. My brother John, Maz, some family members. I had no help. I felt I was all alone and let down by everyone. It was one of the worst times in my life is when Jesus picked me up from the floor and led me to this church where I met Pastor Pete Ness, who made me so welcome, as did everyone in the congregation. It was one of the first times, it was one of the first times I was in a Christian church. Jesus opened my eyes, my ears, and my heart to what was being said. Even, even though I still had troubles, they didn't seem as important. It was like Jesus lifted the burdens from me. I looked at life with different eyes. I didn't feel like I needed to please everyone, and people of no importance, their opinions did not matter to me anymore. The only person I felt I had to please was Jesus Christ and my own family. Then illness came to me. I had treatment and tests. I prayed to God and God answered my prayers and healed me. I continued to have treatments and I'm waiting for tests and I pray and I fully believe Jesus will answer my prayers and cure me of all my sickness and illness. Jesus is my friend. He has given me the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. He guides me. He, he step, takes me from doing wrong in my life. He's leading me to Jesus. 
God has turned my life around. From living a sinful, horrible life to a life full of contentment. I've never felt so content in my life as I do now. I love life. I love my family. I've come so close to all my family. My only regret is not finding Jesus sooner, but I thank him every day for bringing me to him. I love him so much. He died for my sins, for all our sins. It's never too late to repent your sins and come to Jesus. He's waiting with his hands open, waiting for you. I will continue to serve him for the rest of my life, and I pray for my children and friends that isn't saved to come to Jesus. I feel like I have been reborn again as a completely different person. And I know when I enter that water today, the old Eileen, which some of you may miss, <laughs> the old Eileen, she's, in, she's gonna be in there and chucked out like dishwater. <laughs> and the new Eileen is going to come. So that's it. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. That was great. Absolutely great. Well done. Well done. It's a nerve-wracking thing to stand up when you're not used to it and share your story. You've done that beautifully. And, uh, and it's a bl real blessing. And we're going to come straight to baptising you okay. right now. Um, so to, just for everyone's benefit, really, what's going to happen is we're obviously going to get into the tank um, and then we have a promise um, that we believe that God's put on our heart for you from, from God's Word, from the Bible, that uh, Ness is going to ring, read to you, and, uh, and then you've chosen, you've chosen a song. Yes. Um, and as you come out of the, uh, out of the water, we're going to sing that song together. Um, now, you've chosen a particular version. You've chosen a particular version of Amazing Grace, so that's going to be a video. Um, version, but we can sing along to it, that's okay, and then of course as we go out to get changed, Steve yeah. is going to lead us in okay. some more worship. Is that alright? Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah. Let's come to baptise Eileen uh, right now. <coughs> We've got the live stream camera anyway. So. Hey, live stream camera. Stand out, stand back. <laughs> can't, can't see the tag on camera. Okay, let's get on in. Whichever way you like, it's not a very, it's not a very dignified way of doing it. It's kind of like, you know. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. To be honest, we were concerned that we were going to have like it too hot. Um, so I can turn you around. Oh, turn you around. We'll do it this way because then that way they stand. Right. I might come stand over here so I can actually see you to give you from this. Okay. You can cross your eyes over there. That gives us it. Now the reason that uh, Eileen's crossing her arms here if you're, is not for any sort of theological significance. It's so we've got our elbows to hang on to. It's kind of quite, quite convenient. Okay, so. Um, so in celebration of baptism of Eileen Price, this is a scripture for you. It's 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. It says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. 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 Eileen, having invited Jesus to come into your life, do you now declare him to be the Lord of your life, the one in charge? Yes, I do. Great. Then on confession of your faith, 
in Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Yet your spirit dwells in me so vast and yet you're still within all me. churches I know they baptise at the sea, in the, uh, the beach, in the sea. Some go down to a river or a lake and baptise there. One such event, um, as, uh, as a pastor was baptising some people in a river, a, a man came up to him, waded into the water up to him and stood next to him. The, uh, the pastor wasn't quite sure what to do at that moment, so he kind of asked the question. He says, have you come to find Jesus? Oh yes sir, he said. Great then, and so the, the pastor duly baptised him, dunked him, brought him back out. He said, up, he said, he said, have you found Jesus? He said, no, not yet. Oh, said the, the pastor, not quite knowing what to do now. So he decided that he'd baptise him again, uh, this time hold him under for a little bit longer, just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled him back up again. He said, have you found Jesus yet? He says, are you absolutely sure this is where he fell in? <laughs> it's an interesting phrase though isn't it How, have, you, have you come to find Jesus because actually as Eileen's been baptised today she hasn't actually come to find Jesus she's telling the story of the fact that she actually already has met Jesus it happened some time ago when as you heard in her brilliant testimony. She gave, uh, she gave her life to Jesus. She asked him to come into her heart and into her life and she began to follow him. And at that moment she met with Jesus. And so what we did today, what Eileen did today was an action, if you like, to show what has happened in her life. And it's the same for anyone who gets baptised because there's nothing special about this tank comes in four parts, we keep it in the loft, 
We got it down on Wednesday and put it together. Nothing special about the water in it either. Came out of the tap this morning via a hose pipe. Nothing special about that at all. What's special, if you like, what's miraculous, if you like, is what God has done in Eileen's life. And what God has done in each of our lives if we know Jesus. And this is just a chance to obey Jesus and to tell everybody here about it. And that's what Eileen came to do. It isn't even to fulfill some sort of obligation or ritual. You know, there's another story about how um, St. Patrick over in Ireland was baptising one of the kings, King Ang Angus, I think his name was. And uh, during the baptism, and I've got no idea what that baptism looked like, but during the baptism, somehow, um, St. Patrick, carrying a stick with a point on the end, managed to stab the king in the foot. You'll notice nothing like that happened in our baptism service today. <laughs> but St. Patrick didn't notice until the end, and then he saw what had happened, and he was really apologetic to the king, and he said, I'm really sorry, why didn't you say something? Well, the king said, I thought it was part of the baptism. <laughs> See, he was expecting a complicated ritual or process. And over the centuries, people have debated about what happens when people get baptised, what it accomplishes, who should be baptised, um, how much water should be used when you baptise. And all of these things are actually quite important, but what's really important is what it means God has done in somebody's life. Amen. So why do people get baptised? Well, I want to suggest to you four reasons today why people get baptised. And uh, hopefully that will help us understand it nicely. The first reason that people get baptised is to show that they're a brand new person. They've been transformed. Eileen's come today to uh, be baptised, and in her story, she shared about how she feels that she is now a brand new person, a completely different person. And that's exactly what we would expect to be the case, because the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, in other words, if anyone is a Christian, they're a brand new person, the old has gone, and the new has come. Hallelujah. Totally new. The new creation literally means that, a brand new person, beginning again, all the old mistakes, gone, all the old wrongdoing, gone, Amen. wiped out, we get to begin again. Years ago, communism made a claim. It says, we will put a new suit on every man. The Christians, they countered. They said, oh yes, but Jesus can put a new man in every suit. And that's what God promises to do with us. He promises to make us brand new people. And that's something that was fulfilled and began to be fulfilled when Jesus came. Listen to, to this, what was promised. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put my spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. Made new. Everything new. 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 The Bible kind of talks about it in a, in a different kind of a way as well. It talks about us being dead to our old life. Our old, the old uh, person that we was has somehow died and a new person has been raised to life. And that's beautifully demonstrated in baptism. Um, in actual fact, when pe you know, back in the beginning, people would be baptised straight away as soon as they became Christians so that people really got the sense of this. Um, but the idea that there was Jesus, he died upon the cross to take the punishment for our sin. That's our wrongdoing, that's our mistakes, that's our past. He died upon that cross and, they, and he took that sin upon himself and then he was buried in a tomb and then he rose from the dead. 
on the third day, came back to life again and left our sin potentially buried if we trust in him. And when we get baptised, we're kind of acting that out and identifying with him. So as we, we go down into the water, we are dying with Jesus. As we are under the water, we're buried with him. And when we come back out of the water, it's a brand new us coming alive to Christ, beginning again. There's a story told about... Sorry, sorry. We no longer have to feel guilt. We no longer have to feel regret. We no longer even, in a sense, have to feel disappointment at our past because Jesus gives us a new start. There's a, there's a story about how when Christianity first reached Barbados and uh, some people became Christians and uh, they had their first baptism service and the missionaries that had gone over there and shared about Jesus to them were shocked to see everybody turned up in their night dresses and pyjamas. They thought, this is not good, okay? What do we do now? So they tried to get them to change, okay, their, uh, what they were wearing, but the people refused. So the, the, the missionaries thought, well, we better just get on with it. We better just, um, you know, make the best of it and hope that next time we can, we can stop this from happening again. But before they had another baptismal service, what happened is that they went to a funeral service. And as they went to the funeral service, they were surprised to see that the dead body, the person that was being buried, was dressed in his pyjamas. And it was explained that in their culture, when somebody died, they viewed it as going to sleep. So they dressed them in their nightwear. And suddenly the missionaries understood that these Barba new Barbados Christians had actually got an important point. They recognised that their old self was dying. It was a new self Amen. that had come to life. So we get baptised because we are brand new people. Why else do we get baptised? Well, it's to show that we belong to Jesus. Um, the Bible tells us the story of when Jesus himself got Baptized. He, he got baptised at a time with a whole crowd of other people who were being baptised by a guy called John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, um, that baptism was a little bit different, um, much the same, but a little bit different to ours today because it was pre-Jesus. And actually, rather than as a recognition of what God has done, it, was, it really was for them a, a, a preparation, a coming in repentance. The Bible has this word, repentance, which means to turn ar around and start living your life for, for, for God instead of living your life for yourself in your own way. And uh, so the people there were coming in this repentance to be baptised by John as John was getting people ready for Jesus. Well, that's nearly everybody. There was one person who didn't come to do that, and that was Jesus, because he had nothing to repent of. He was already going God's way. The Bible says he never did anything wrong. So why was Jesus baptised? Well, it was very simple. Because everybody else was doing it. Now, I know that that's not always a good rationale. How many children have been told by parents, if your friends all walked in front of a bus, would you do it too? I know. But in the case of Jesus... He was doing it because everyone else was doing it, because he was demonstrating that he belonged with them and they belonged with him. And it's the same when we get baptised. We're showing that we belong with Jesus and we belong to Jesus. Again, this is something that happens when we became Christians, not necessarily at baptism, but baptism is a brilliant demonstration of the fact that that is what has happened in our lives, that we've suddenly begun to belong to Jesus. That we are his. The Bible t starts talking about us then as chosen people and royal priesthood. So I won't go into what that means right now. But also holy nations and a people belonging to God. God's special possession. So we get baptised to show that we're brand new people. And we get baptised in order to show that we belong to Jesus, we get baptised as well to show that God is still working in our lives. It's a good thing, really, 
to know that God has not finished with any of his followers yet. Most of us, I think, would breathe a huge sigh of relief as we look at ourselves. But it's true. God has not finished with us yet. He has still got great things that he wants to do in our lives and through our lives as we continue to live for him and to follow him. And I think that's that's something that baptism demonstrates beautifully. You see, today, you would have seen that Eileen was immersed or submerged in water. We didn't sprinkle her. We, don't do, we didn't do sprinkling because the b- word in the Bible, baptizo, the Greek word that's actually in the Bible, means to dip or to submerge. It's a word that was often used in sheep dipping. Okay, But actually, we don't do it this way just because there is a, you know, a meaning behind a biblical word. We do it because it reflects the character of who God is himself. You see, we don't serve a God of sprinkling. We serve a God of immersion. We don't serve a God who just gives us, wants us to have a tiny little bit of experience of him. We serve a God who wants us to have a full experience of him as he surrounds us and fills our lives. God doesn't want to just give us a little bit of himself. He wants to give us all of himself. And likewise, God doesn't want to just um, give us a little bit of what we need. He wants to give us all that we need. It may well be that he'll do it in a very quiet, unseen kind of ways, but it would be a mistake to therefore start defining God as small. Because he's really, really not. We don't want to limit his power to that of a sprinkle. And as Eileen made this step today, she was fully submerged or fully immersed. And that was a statement that God is all she needs to surround her life. And also that she believes God is fully and completely continuing to work in her life. Amen. Finally, one last reason. Why do people get baptised? Well, they do it in order to show that from that point on, well, from the point they became a Christian, but from that point on, they are going to follow and serve Jesus and do what he wants for their lives. And that all began with a choice to do just that. All we've talked about, actually, all that we've, we've gone into today has been about, came from a choice to do that, to follow Jesus, to begin to live for him. And that makes it a choice that actually we all need to make in our own lives. Actually, we need to make it on a day-by-day basis to follow him and to live for him. And it's made possible because Jesus made a choice for us. Our choice is possible because God made a choice. He chose to send his one and only son to come and die upon a cross, to take the punishment and to take upon himself all of our mistakes, all of our sin, all of our wrongdoing, all of the things that were offensive. He took upon himself. And because he did it, we don't have to. Another baptism story, my last one, I promise. Okay, a grandma was getting baptised. She invited the whole family, okay, including her six-year-old grandson. Now, the parents tried their best to, dis- to, to explain to him how grandma was dying to self and coming alive to Christ. I'm not sure I would have kind of uh, tackled quite those kind of abstract concepts with, with a six-year-old exactly like that, but no- nonetheless they did. And he clearly didn't understand. Because as he looked, sat in the church, and he looked up, he saw a cross. He turned to his dad and he said, Dad, how on earth are they going to get Grandma on that cross? (laughs) Well, the reality is, Grandma doesn't have to go on the cross. Neither do we. Because that's where Jesus went. Jesus went on the cross, in our place, to take our punishment 
to take our mistakes, to take our wrongdoing, to take everything that kept us separated from God so we could know him and experience him and live with him forever again. Jesus did it all. And so I don't want anybody walking out of this building today or anybody watching on the live stream switching it off without being given, as I always do pretty much every week, given an opportunity to make that decision to follow Jesus, to make that choice that we talked about a moment, a moment ago. I don't want anybody to walk out of this place without, if they haven't done so already, knowing and becoming a brand new person. Or knowing that they belong to God. Or knowing that God is now working in their lives on a day-by-day -day ongoing basis and knowing what it is to follow him and serve him with all of the hope and the purpose that that brings. I don't want anybody coming away from this time not having that opportunity to respond to that. And so right now, I'm going to do that, just that. I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer. And I'm going to invite you to make a response to belong to Jesus and become a brand new person. Let's pray together. And for those who are praying this for the first time and making the decision to follow Jesus for the first time, when we come to an Amen, understand that that means so be it, I agree, that's my choice. And you will have become part of the family of God. Father God, I just want to thank you for all that we've said baptism means. That when we come to know you, we are brand new people. We, are, we, we belong to you. We know you at work in our lives and we can serve you. We've been set free from everything that was past to begin our life again within your power and in your love. And Lord, at this moment, I make a decision to give my life to you. I hand my life to you and ask you, Lord, to take the reins. And help me to know that I'm now part of the family of God, that my life has begun again, and that I am yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those who prayed that prayer at home. Sorry. Don't worry. Those who prayed those that prayer at home, please get in contact with us. There is a number and an email on the screen. The number's best. Okay? Let us know that you've made the decision to follow Jesus because we want to help you as you get started. Anybody here that's prayed that prayer, please speak to us afterwards. Please don't walk out of this door without you actually put legs on what you've done today. Because again, we want you to start and, and make a good start. Amen. Amen. Let's worship again, shall we? And um, as we do so, we're going to uh, take up our offering. If you're visiting with us today, if you're a get one of our guests today, we would we rather would say, um, don't feel under any obligation to give. We do this as an act of worship to God. Um, if you want to, that's great, but don't feel under any obligation to do that at all as we worship again together. Number 32. Mm -hmm. Praise the noble well and have your mercy found and change the heart and heart and mind. I tried to 
turn away and I behind you gave but you refuse to read my sign wonderful God wonderful God wonderful Savior wonderful love who could compare none can be found wonderful Savior wonderful love undeserving grace you stole my heart away forever I am yours my King the beauty of your strength draws me once again to stand before you now and sing wonderful God wonderful God wonderful Savior wonderful love Bless you. It's great to have seen you today. Please don't rush off unless you really, really have to. We are serving refreshment, tea, coffee and the like in the, uh, in the coffee shop. And we would love you to uh, stay and spend some time with us. But so thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, and God bless you.